Hello, thank you for joining us here at Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the Raspberry Pi 4 computer desktop kit. We'll take a look at all the components that come with the kit. We'll set it up. There are a few issues that I ran into that we will overcome in this video so you can determine whether or not this is right for you. So with that, let's get started. Let's take a quick look at the improvements on the Raspberry Pi 4. Here we have a more powerful processor, the Broadcom BCM2711 quad core at 1.5 gigahertz. We've got one gigabyte, two gigabyte, or four gigabytes of RAM. In this particular kit, we have four gigabytes of RAM. A 2.4 gigahertz and 5.0 gigahertz IEEE 802.11 AC wireless as well as Bluetooth 5.0, Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. And if that wasn't enough, there's two micro HDMI ports that support 4K at 60 frames per second. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and unbox the Raspberry Pi 4 computer desktop kit. Ah, look at that. There it is. Very nice packaging. The Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit. Let's see what the contents include. A Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 4 gigs of RAM, a USB keyboard and hub, a USB mouse and SD card, a USB-C power supply, micro HDMI cables, a case, and a book. Let's check it out. Alright, so let's see here. What have we got? Looks like a quick start guide. Cool. Alright, we'll set that to the side and keep looking. What have we got here? Looks like a USB-C power supply. The official Raspberry Pi mouse. And of course, the Raspberry Pi 4 itself in its new case. Very nice. All right, we'll take a look and see what's under here. Here we have the micro SD card that includes Raspbian. And here we have the official Raspberry Pi keyboard and hub. Cool. Two micro HDMI to standard HDMI cables for hooking up to two separate monitors if you'd like. Very cool. All right, we'll set that off to the side and we'll take a look at this. Wow, this is a nice, thick, heavy book. Lots of projects and stuff. Very impressive. That is a nice book right there. I wonder how many pages are in here. Let's see. 249 pages. Nice. Definitely want to read this. I like it. All right. So now let's go back and take a look at the keyboard. Go ahead and open it up here. All right. Here's the cable. That's going to connect up to the keyboard to the Raspberry Pi 4. 
Wow, that's a nice little keyboard. I'm impressed. It doesn't feel cheap. Raspberry Pi keyboard. It's got three USB 2.0 ports here on the back. Micro USB. It has a nice feel to it, too. I like it. Alright, we'll move on to the USB-C power supply. The official Raspberry Pi power supply for the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. And notice here it's a USB-C connector. I like that. I like that they're including USB-C. There's our micro SD. It includes Raspbian, the operating system that you're going to be using with the Raspberry Pi 4. And here's the case. We'll go ahead and open up the Raspberry Pi 4. Nice. Notice here you have the external display connector, your GPIO header pins, your USB-C power goes right here, and you have two micro HDMI outputs, your audio output. You have two USB 2.0 ports, USB 3.0 ports, and a gigabit ethernet port, and on the back side, this is where you'll connect your micro SD card. Just slide it in. All right, to put it into the case, just bring it in at a slight angle, allow the connectors to go through, and tilt the back of the top of the case slightly, and it should pop right in. Just like so. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now let's take a look at the official Raspberry Pi mouse. So it's a nice optical mouse with a scroll wheel. Very cool. Okay, so let's move on to the setup. First, we're going to take the micro SD card out of the sleeve. And we'll place it into the micro SD slot on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now we'll set the keyboard down here, and we'll get the keyboard cable. We'll plug the micro USB connector into the keyboard. And we'll be sure to plug the other end into the USB 2.0 ports. Not the blue ones, but the other two. Now we have USB 2.0. All right, we'll go ahead and plug in the mouse into the keyboard or the hub at the back of the keyboard. Now we'll plug the micro HDMI cable in. Notice this end goes into your TV or monitor. And right here, we'll go ahead and plug it in. Now all we're missing is the power. So we'll go ahead and connect the power. Right here into the USB-C connector. Plug it into the outlet. Oh, before we do that, I almost forgot this. I almost didn't see it. These are the little rubber feet for the back of the case. So we'll go ahead and pop these on real quick. And we are done. Now we can plug that cable in. And turn this thing on. And check it out. Once you power on the Raspberry Pi 4, it's going to have to resize the file system. It'll automatically reboot. And then we can enter Raspbian. 
We'll go ahead and set the time zone here. I'm in the central time zone, so I'll go with Chicago. Use US keyboard, use English language, click next. So we just go through this wizard. Next we'll enter a password. It's letting us know the default password is Raspberry. Now we'll connect up to the Wi-Fi network. So we'll go through here and I'll locate mine. And we'll go ahead and enter the password and connect up to the Wi-Fi network. If you're enjoying this video and finding it useful, please click like below. Subscribe if you wish. All right, so now we're going to go hit next here to update the software. And uh-oh, looks like we have an issue. Error checking for updates. Okay. That was unexpected. We'll hit OK. And we'll go ahead and restart and see if it takes care of itself on restart. So now we've restarted. We'll go back in. Go down to Raspberry or recommended software. And no, there still exists. Okay, what could it be then? That's kind of bothersome. Let's open up a uh, shell and we'll type in sudo apt git update. It's Raspbian Buster in release. And looky here. Uh, all right, we'll do a sudo apt git upgrade. I'll let that run. I'm gonna speed forward through this. It says the desktop has been updated. We'll click OK. And we'll just go ahead and type in sudo reboot. And reboot. Of course, you could use the button in the upper left. Shut down and restart. All right, so now we'll go back in and see if it works now. Updating package data, please wait. No, that didn't fix it. All right, so here is the fix. Type sudo apt update dash y. Took me a little while to find this. And now we'll type in sudo apt git update. All right, looks like everything's good. So now we'll type sudo apt git upgrade. And this will take a little while to run. We'll go ahead and run it. Hit yes. Don't forget to check out wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash rpi4. There I'll have additional videos as they're released and more information on the Raspberry Pi 4. Alright, so now we'll go back in and check this out and make sure that this took care of the issue. So now we are updating the recommended software. It's finding packages and now it's updating. Finding packet. This is good. <laughs> All right. So now we should probably go ahead and test adding an application here. So we'll just go ahead and scroll through and just pick one. Um, let's see, what was that? Scratch. Scratch 3. Version 3. Yeah, let's go ahead and check this. Looks good. 
And we'll just see if we can update that. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. And it looks like it's downloading. So yeah, that should take care of the issue. So if you run into it, please come back and check this video again after you've received your kit. But again, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be corrected soon. Installation is complete. Alright, so let's play around with a few applications here just to make sure things are running well. We'll go ahead and launch the Chromium web browser. Alright, we'll now resize the screen here, or the window rather. And we'll go to www.youtube.com. And we'll type in, well, let's see, what is this? Okay, we'll just close out of this window. And we'll type in Wagner's Tech Talk. And I'm going to play a video here from my channel, just very briefly. Just to show you something. Okay, so the video looks pretty good, but do you notice anything unusual? If you look up in the upper right hand corner you'll notice something. It's running hot. The temperature's high on the Raspberry Pi 4. I contacted Canakit to see if maybe they just didn't send them, but no, this particular kit does not include them. So they were kind enough to send me their kit, which includes better cooling in the case, so look forward to a review shortly on that. In the meantime, I did managed to find a few heat sinks that I had stashed in a drawer so I went ahead and applied it and I didn't have any issues after that. Okay quickly we'll try one other application. We'll try LibreOffice Writer just to make sure it starts up. As you can see it's starting up pretty quick and there we go. We could type in a letter, print it, and we'll just go ahead and exit. So here are my thoughts on the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit. As far as the pros are concerned, it's very well designed. It's a nice alternate computer for the kitchen, your kids' room. It's got a good selection of applications. It's very compact, has dual HDMI output, which is nice. It has more RAM. Uh, I'd say the only cons are it should include heat sinks at this price, and the software installation could be easier and cooling could be a problem. But otherwise, I think it's a great kit and something you might want to consider. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you very soon.